Wow. This is Can Explains Extreme Weather. Freezes like strongest storm on record, worst flood in decades, and record-breaking heat waves are common in the news. It feels like weather records are being broken all the time, and I keep hearing that weather is getting more and more extreme because of climate change. But what exactly is extreme weather? First off, what's the difference between the terms extreme and severe? Well, the term severe, as in severe storm, is very specific. For example, Environment Canada will issue a severe thunderstorm warning when there is at least one thunderstorm that produces hail large enough to cause damage, heavy rain, and or damaging wind is imminent. Extreme weather is a term that can be used more freely. It generally refers to any weather that is unexpected, unusual, severe, out of season, or is at the extremes of recorded weather history. Hurricanes, tornadoes, floods, droughts, blizzards, and wildfires are just some of the extreme weather events that people have to deal with. Storm chasers and meteorologists, such as Mark Robinson, go into storms to provide on-the-ground information. Wow! This is going! I just... Unbelievable! I wasn't expecting it to be this strong! Robinson has been in a lot of extreme situations. I've been through 23 hurricanes. Uh, I can, I've lost track of the number of tornadoes, maybe 50 or 60. I've jumped into four volcanoes. So, are we experiencing more severe and extreme weather because of climate change? Well, Robinson says that just looking at one severe storm can't prove climate change is affecting weather patterns. But at the same time, one event can't disprove it. So one-off events, not great evidence either way, but overall, when we put these, oh, these, these, um, these events into a much larger data set, yes, we can absolutely use that and sort of understand uh, what's going on. Scientists look at decades of information to figure out trends and patterns that match up with data that links the trends to the planet warming. Let's look at hurricanes as an example. The scientific community overwhelmingly agrees that the ocean has gotten warmer because of climate change. Hurricanes are created over the ocean and are fueled by warm ocean waters and thunderstorms. That's why hurricanes start to lose their power as they hit land. So more warm water means more fuel for hurricanes. And more fuel means it takes hurricanes longer to run out of gas as they move inland. As the ocean continues to warm, regions that used to be fairly safe from hurricanes might have to prepare for types of storms they've never seen before. Just watch the intensity of this storm increase hour by hour. Okay, but where does that leave us humans? As weather patterns change and become more severe, people will have to adapt. Many regions will have to update their infrastructure to match new realities. Infrastructure includes things like buildings, roads, waterworks, power grids, and all the things we build to keep society running safely and smoothly. If infrastructure isn't adapted, that can lead to disaster. Millions of Americans are once again waking up to snow, freezing temperatures, and most importantly, no power. Like in Texas in February of 2021 where a winter storm caused a surge in electricity usage, causing a major power outage. Who would think it would be storming in uh, Texas? Texas isn't used to this type of extreme cold weather, and they weren't prepared for people turning on their heaters all at once. The system blew out and millions of people were left without power, some for up to three days. 246 people died, most of them from the cold because the power grid just wasn't set up for that kind of demand. Around the world, weather disasters have forced people from their homes to find safety. For many, it's just temporary, but for others, they may be displaced for months or even years. Evacuees could be living in hotels for weeks, if not months. It's stressful to leave a lot of stuff behind. Um, our home, all our stuff, all our belongings. Most migrate within their own countries, while others have to move even farther away to new countries. 
Some advocates refer to people displaced by environmental changes and natural disasters linked to climate change as climate refugees. According to the International Displacement Monitoring Center, the people who track these kinds of things worldwide, an average of 21.8 million people are forcibly displaced by weather-related events every year. To better understand what it means to be displaced, we spoke to Kaylee Ober from Refugees International. The ability to overcome or the ability to even have the, the choice to move is a privilege, right? People who are the most vulnerable to climate change and severe weather are people who are poor and those who do not have good support from their community and their government when disaster happens. Now all of this might sound really scary, but the good news is that people are working on tackling these problems. You might have heard that parts of BC have been rocked by extreme weather in the recent years. Well, in June of 2022, the BC government announced that they will invest more than $500 million over the next three years to ensure that the province is prepared to adapt to climate change impacts. And Canada's federal government is currently working on their first ever national strategy for climate change adaptation, and it's set to be released in the fall of 2022. If you're feeling anxious about severe weather, Robinson says, don't be. Even with climate change, severe storms are still rare. Of course, safety is no accident. Talk to your family about setting up your own emergency plan. And just like every storm, this can explains must come to an end. For CBC Kids News, I'm Caden Tonight. Creating this explainer took a lot of research. Thank you to our two experts, Mark Robinson and Kaylee Ober. Some other resources include Reuters, the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NASA, Environment and Climate Change Canada, and CBC News.